you know, as, oh, now it's recording. Oh, geez, I'm going to be held accountable to everything I say and do. Um, let me share kind of the presentation mode and we'll go into that. And, uh, and then sometimes I forget even where to do the presentation mode on these things. There we go. From the beginning. Um, so I imagine you can all see me here. This is Tech and Senior Care. So um, my name is Ryan. I'm the NAIPC president over in uh, Massachusetts. Um, and so I would like to kind of say as a uh, preface to this is that technology is quickly changing in this field. There is a very good chance that the things I talk about today um, will have changed just even 90 days from now because it's just, um, it's evolving so very quickly. So, you know, I, I kind of wanted this presentation to be about what I'm seeing and what I'm experiencing. Um, and I'm sure that there are other options that are out there that maybe some of you know that are like, hey, listen, there's just so many different tech companies doing different things that um, and it's changing so quickly that it's impossible to know everything that's going on out there. But um, I'll let you know what I'm seeing. So I'm the owner of Minute Women Home Care, and uh, we're a private home care company located in historic Lexington, Massachusetts, just outside of Boston, Mass. Um, as I said, I'm also the president of the NAIPC in Mass, the Mass chapter, um, and I'm also an investor in a company called Well Aware Care, and that's kind of the tech side of things. And my goal of the speech isn't necessarily to have it be, um, isn't for it to be a, a pitch to you all about why Well Aware Care is the next latest and greatest thing it's more of saying hey this is what we're seeing this is what we're doing and this will give you kind of an idea of where things are trending when technology is coming into um, senior care and so um, I got into uh, home care about 10 years ago and it's kind of funny now that what we're seeing right now with with staffing issues and I'll talk about that but you know 10, 11 years ago, $28 an hour for home care was the high end of the market in Massachusetts. I wanted to be on the higher end. And now um, we're talking about $40 an hour being the mid middle to higher end these days. So that gives you kind of an idea of where things are at and how they've changed. And, um, you know, that's kind of kind of one of the reasons why I got involved in well aware care is because home care is still extraordinarily dependent on manual labor. Same with assisted living, same with nursing facilities. Um, to me, it's, it's, it's very archaic. And um, we've, we've had a lot of difficulty figuring out how to bring um, technology into seniors uh, for various reasons. But, you know, with home care, it's still one on one care. You know, uh, a lot of home care companies are finally migrating over to having some technology in their business where, but mainly that technology has to do with the caregivers being able to clock in and clock out using a, a fancy app and be able to put notes into um, the system using that app. But when it comes to actual um, any type of care or, or helping a senior, it is still manual one-on-one -on -one care. It's, it's, and it's not going to go away. I'm not saying that they're going to be robots or anything um, replacing caregivers, but you, you have to wonder when we have uh, so much power in these, these phones, and now the smartphones phones flip open. Um, how is that going to be introduced into senior care? Because it's a huge market. And, you know, what all three of these uh, these types of senior care communities, facilities, and, and businesses are finding is that there's not enough staff to go around. There's not enough caregivers to go around. We are having, we are, we, I was just talking with, uh, I guess you call them a competitor, but another home care company out in Acton, Mass, they're about 20 minutes away from me. And we were talking about how, you know, three or four years ago, we'd be doing, you know, cartwheels and, and jumping jacks with getting 24 hour cases. Now we get 24 hour cases weekly and we're turning them away because there's so many people that want home care and not enough 
caregivers to go around. So you end up putting people on a waiting list. And assisted livings are having the same difficulties with staffing right now. Um, they can't keep staff um, in, their, in their buildings. And they also have archaic models in which they don't really use a whole lot of technology. Um, you know, you still have those pull cords that are in assisted livings nowadays that are, are, are sometimes used. But again, you know, you would think that there would be a much better system in place. Um, assisted livings are still expected to be checking in on residents once an hour by walking around and poking their head in a door, opening it up, making sure Ron's sleeping soundly in his bed, and then closing the door. Well, what happens for the next 58 minutes and 30 seconds, you know? And that's assuming that they're doing these every single hour, which if it gets crazy that night or there's an issue, Maybe they don't get to it for an hour or two. I don't know. But you're you're telling me that the only way that we can check on our residents and assisted livings is by poking our head in for five to 10 seconds once an hour. It seems pretty archaic to me. And nursing homes are having the same issues with staffing. Obviously, they are dealing with a higher uh, higher acuity level when people need that type of care. But you know, similarly, they're still using bed pads and, and alarm chairs. When somebody gets up, it, it blows, blows up the alarm and, and everybody's rushing in to help out. We're still using many antiquated um, forms of checking in on our seniors. And where I think that this is a problem is we are very reactive versus proactive. Um, we are waiting for we are, we, we are more isolated from our seniors, more and more of my customers, um, the adult children live further away from their senior, their, their senior loved ones or their, their family members. Um, and even, even if you're a local, you're still unaware of, of the declines that occur with your parents, right? You can't be there 24 hours a day to see what's going on. And you are also relying on your, the honesty of, of your parents to tell you, um, what's happening and sometimes they're not always as forthcoming as we want them to be because they're scared of what those ramifications are of declining and so a lot of families are stuck being reactive rather than proactive and waiting for the big one that that fall that issue that that um catastrophe that means that hey we have to address the elephant in the living room and if we don't, then we are being negligent with our parents, even if they're angry with us, even if they're, they're going to be pissed off and they're going to hold it against us. It doesn't matter anymore because you have, you fell and you, you broke your hip or your ankle. You're clearly, there's something we have to do about this, or we're not being good adult children to you. And this is kind of where my frustration and looking into, um, what well, this 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 fundamentally brought me to the NAIPC um, because I started doing uh, seminars and podcasts about trying to be proactive about aging in place and people declining. We are all going to decline. It's just how rapidly or how slowly we do, right? Um, and, you know, trying to get families to accept that having these conversations sooner rather than later is a, is a good thing. But I think one of the issues that families have is that they don't know about what's going on in the home to be able to have that conversation starter. Hey, mom, I think you're falling. You're, 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 you say your hip hurts. How did your, your hip get bruised? Well, it wasn't a fall. I'll tell you that. I just bumped into the wall or whatever excuse they come up with. So um, that is kind of some of the issues that we're seeing in the home care world. And one of those problems that comes with staffing is the amount that we're paying our caregivers, which justifiably is, is understandable, but at the same time, that causes the rates to go up. And so then we start pricing ourselves out of the market for a lot of seniors. Assisted livings are now eight, nine, ten thousand dollars $10,000 a month in our neck of the woods in Boston area. And that is a, you know, that's more on the memory care side of things, but that's a lot of money. And you might have somebody who needs memory care for years and years before they pass away. Um, and so it's, it's not inexpensive by any, any realm. And so when you have that, you have family members that are weighing uh, the cost of care to the, uh, to the, the, what they can afford and what, they, their parents need in terms of, of help. And then they're either figuring out how they do it themselves or, 
or not. So how does this bring into technology? The reason for this is kind of what I'm seeing as a home care owner, and it brought me to well aware care, but I certainly did want to give some props to some of the other companies that I've, I've seen that I think have done a great job and have helped out. And I think this is kind of where we're seeing technology bleed into um, senior care and, and get their get in there because we are finding that there's going to be more and more um, family members who cannot afford private home care, that cannot afford assisted living services or don't want to go into a nursing home. And so how are they going to stay safe in their own homes if they can afford that? Well, you would imagine lower cost technology is going to help out with that. And so one of the companies that I've always recommended um, is a company called MedMinder. I'm sure there are, there are other ones out there, but um, they've done a great job um, in, in my opinion, from what I've seen, and they're basically a smart um, pill dispenser and, and you go to them for, for the pharmacy. So they send you out very easy to install, um, uh, you know, bubble packs or packets for the, the, the medication. But basically, it's a medication reminder that's easy to fill. And for people that either have, you know, light memory care issues or are living alone and, and declining, they have lights and audio tones for reminders. Um, they will then if they if they miss meaning the senior misses their, uh, their their um, scheduled time to take the pills, it will automatically call the senior to remind them to take the pills. And then if that doesn't work, because it can obviously tell when you've opened up one of the pill, um, the pill packets there, um, if it says, hey, listen, we've made a call to remind the senior, it will automatically call the family. Um, and so all of those pill dispensers are locked until it's time for you to have, have your, uh, your medication. And so then it allows that to be unlocked and it lights up and it, it, it you know beeps and it alerts people to do that and I thought that was great we've we've recommended this to almost every single home care um, client we've had because you know so we've we've had home care clients um, that have taken all their medication and put it into a giant jar or bowl in front of them and literally eat them like skittles and we go in there for a six hour shift and we see all these medications in a giant bowl and there needs to be a better way to do that and this is where um i found that we've made made a lot of headway in, in recommending medminder but i'm sure there are other ones out there um the other the other company that that it's not necessarily just a company, but it's these PERS. And um, one of the things I, I was at the uh, at a conference in Newport, Rhode Island, a couple of weekends ago um, for the home care and, and health care conference um, for our state or regional um, home care uh, uh association, excuse me. And there was a Connect America right across, uh, across from me. And I think I saw um, Tom there. He was, I think he's in this, this meeting today. Um, who does life phone and you know typically pers are considered kind of aren't smart right um but that's that's changing you know that you know one of the downsides with pers is that they're they're not super smart they take interaction you need to press a button you need to do something you need to wear something and sometimes seniors aren't willing to do that um and so those are some of the the downsides that well aware care um, alleviates that I, I'll talk about. But even when looking at Connect America, and I wanted to give them kind of props about this, this is where we're seeing things going. You see right, right here, remote patient monitoring, a turnkey AI enabled platform um, that is that can help out with monitoring and improving health metrics, AI virtual assistants. Um, even the PERS themselves are starting to become smart. You have, you know, I'm wearing one now, the smartwatches. So they're trying to get smartwatches to be the next new PER for seniors to be able to collect data as well as be able to uh, have alerts when, when falls or emergencies occur. And so obviously it is all trending in this, this direction of having the data and the analytics to be able to make care decisions um, and know what's going on in the home, especially if you're an adult child that is um, a bit more isolated from your, your parents. Like my dad's down in Florida. And so if he didn't have his living girlfriend there, I wouldn't know what's going on in there. He doesn't tell me anything. He just tells me what book he's reading and what he shot on the golf course when he plays once a week. And that's about all I get out of it. So if it has anything more to do with his health, he's fine. He's feeling okay. And you're not going to find out about that until a catastrophe occurs. Right. And so 
this is where we are trending right now and what we're seeing. And one of the, the areas that we're seeing become more and more popular is this remote patient monitoring. And um, I bring this up because it's obviously less expensive to be able to do remote monitoring directly from your, your home on a Zoom or a FaceTime or a WhatsApp call. Um, it's more profitable. You can see more people more quickly on the business side and you see more patients. But the big one is, is analyzing the data. And we're finding that there are more and more companies that are popping up that they're part of their service that they're offering seniors is to analyze the data that smart, uh, smart device are getting and collecting in seniors, and then being able to present that to family members on how to go about care. So there's kind of two sides of it. There's the smart side, that the smart devices side that collects the data and provides it to people. And then there's the service where you may have like a nurse or a PT or OT that is looking at that data and analyzing it on behalf of the family members so that they can then make recommendations and hopefully hopefully reduce readmissions or admissions into hospitals and certainly reduce readmissions into hospitals. Um, taking this information and making informed care uh, decisions or recommendations to family members. And so that's kind of where it's really trending to as more and more family members live further away from their loved ones and either um, they, they have to move them back into home or they have to figure out a way to be able to help them remote. And so that, that's what we're seeing. And we've, we've talked to three or four different companies like that, that are providing those services where it's, Hey, pay us a, a flat monthly fee. And it ranges wildly. Some of them are $40 a month. Some of them are four or $500 a month. And then you get to speak with somebody on a regular basis. And then they'll take this information and make recommendations for it. One person, one company is a company called connected home living. Uh, another company we've talked to, is a company called Dwell Assured. Um, and there's companies like Kendall at Home that have some similar models as well that you, you pay a monthly fee and you're part of this plan and then you get the benefits of that plan when you need them. So um, it's very interesting to see how this is, this is all going. And so when I when I spoke with the guys with Well Aware Care, I had obviously seen some of these things and, and had been up to date, but my biggest question was, was this question. How do you get seniors to use it? The problem that we have with a lot of technology is that, and I'll probably be this way when I'm 80 years old, if I'm luckily, lucky to make it that way, where I'm going to be a grumpy old man that likes to do things the way I've always done them, and I sure as heck am not going to learn any new technologies. Now, Maybe with the baby boomers, maybe with the Gen X, you're going to have a lot more openness to trying technology because baby boomers are much more apt to be having um, iPhones. Even my dad and even my aunts and uncles who are in their 80s um, are using iPhones and, and using them with pretty good, um, pretty good ability. But at the end of the day, this is the question that we all have with technologies. How do you get a senior to... Um, to, to work with it. And so that's where, what made me very interested in well aware care and showing you kind of what some of this technology is able to do. And I thought it was pretty, pretty cool. So what well aware care is, is they are, uh, we are a software company. And so what ended up happening is we're out uh, there. The founders are out in Littleton, Massachusetts. And they found a loved one that was on the ground for a couple of days and they had passed away. And they said, there has to be a better way to know when an emergency like that has occurred. Um, and they had worked for Dell when Dell was in the area for many years and they decided that they were going to build what's called a, uh, become a software company that is a hardware integrator. So what that means with hardware integration is that they're taking already existing hardware and plugging it into their software and then being able to use that hardware to collect data and analytics on what's going on in somebody's home. So if you think about it, Well Aware Care is the equivalent of going to the Ford, uh, Ford dealership and buying the car all in one rather than going out and buying the parts piecemeal and then figuring out how to do all of it. So if you were to use the technology that we use, you would need to have separate accounts, separate logins, be able to look at them individually, rather all in one place under one dashboard. And so the big thing that we want to do is fall detection. Um, additionally, remote monitoring, 
And then of course, taking that data and making it easy to use in a dashboard, um, it's easy to read in a dashboard. So when I sit down with these folks, um, that was a concern I had. Like I knew technology was going to get involved in the senior care world, but the question was how it was it going to do that? And the fundamental, um, the fundamental thing with any of the hardware that gets used um, in uh, well aware care is that the care the the senior does not interact with it in any way, shape, or form. Um, so what is on the left here where you see the fall detected is a circular device that gets placed on the wall. And that circular device uses radio waves to determine if a fall has occurred or um, if somebody's just you know laying on a couch. They can tell the difference than that. And if a fall does occur, um, it sends out an alert within 90 seconds um, to an unlimited amount of contacts that are preloaded in the software. So it's uh, email, voice, text. And so oh, I forgot to turn off my phone, I guess. Um, so the, the, the fundamental reason for this is that it doesn't have a camera on it, which we found that many people were very adverse to having a camera. And um, it is not something that needs to be worn. There's no buttons that you have to press. It's plug and play. We program it with the Wi-Fi that is in the home or the internet that's in the home. It plugs in and it automatically starts working. It attaches to the wall using those 3M uh, stickies, the uh, command strips. And so the the what you get from this and what is what is going to be fascinating, because of course we're not the only company to do this, but it is um, the data that you're able to collect. And this is the dashboard that we can show families. And so this dashboard is a, an example of somebody that like an assisted living that has multiple people that are using uh, multiple rooms that are using this, this fall detector because you have four men and four women. But the types of, of, of information you can get from this is how often somebody's alone, what times are they alone, um, where are falls occurring, and in what room are they occurring in, uh, what time of the day are these falls occurring in, all of this data that can allow you to make decisions. I cannot tell you how many times that a certain local assisted living would call me up and say, hey, listen, Ryan, you are getting referred to this family that's coming back from Leahy Hospital in Burlington because we don't know if they're a fall risk at night. So we're just going to have you go in there and do four to seven days of 12 hour shifts. And all just to find out if somebody's up at night or not because you can't just take one night for it. So you kind of have to have at least three or four to know if there's a trend, but then if they're up a couple times and it's sporadic, well, then you need somebody for seven to 10 days to really know if they're getting up or not. And so these are the types of things that, I mean, as much as I want business, like how can you get a family to pay $40 a, an hour for 12 hours for seven days when you can have technology that can find out if somebody's up or not in the middle of the night? And so you're going to be able in the lower left hand corner see where there's recovered falls versus assisted falls, meaning that it, this, this technology can tell when somebody has fallen, but if they've gotten up within the 90 seconds on their own, it still records that for families to know about. It. And um, obviously a, uh, a, a fall that was assisted or when they needed assistance to get back up is going to be recorded because a text alert um, with the phone and the alerts that go out um, through the system are going to trigger that that it was a um, it was a fall that needed assistance on it. And then of course, when you have these devices in different rooms, one needs to be placed in the bathroom, of course, then you can get the data on when somebody is how often somebody's going to the bathroom and what time they're going to the bathroom, which is certainly important when you're dealing with medication and you're dealing with learning what's going on with, with a loved one. If they're going to the bathroom more often, well, then maybe that's a sign of a UTI. Maybe that's a sign that something needs to be, be uh, addressed. And so this is all the type of stuff that I believe we're going to see more and more commonplace with um, seniors to be able to know what's going on in the home. And the reason I bring this up and going back to being proactive or, or reactive is when you have data like this, you are going to be able to be proactive on what's going on with your mom's mom or dad's care. Generally speaking, you're not dealing with one big fall and that's the start of the decline. You're dealing with a lot of little falls and then the big one 
comes, right? You're, 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 going to ex going to see that these falls are occurring more often somebody's less steady on their feet so all of a sudden when they weren't having falls maybe they're having falls once a month and then it goes from to twice a month and then you start seeing in real almost real time what's going on and and mom is is going to need need care because a lot of family members and i talk to them on the home care side of things they say hey listen we want to get mom broke her ankle uh, grandma broke her ankle was the, the person she's 85 years old and we want her to be back to baseline before she broke her ankle. I said, well, you're going to have to throw the kitchen sink on at that because you're probably going to have to hire private PT or OT to, to be able to work with your mom because the VNA is understaffed right now because they they have too many people that need their services and not enough staff to go around. You're probably going to have to go to a third party vendor to pay for that because it is going to be that hard to bring an 85 year old back to baseline before they've had uh, before they had a broken ankle and this is going to allow and senior tech in 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 a whole is going to be able to allow families to kind of see when that volcano might be getting close to erupting when that big fall is going to happen and so um i guess i i uh I, f I forgot I get talking, but again, this is kind of what it can do. And then this is the, the Withing sleep pad. We have a smart sleep pad um, that also gets data. And so the sleep pad is, is, is really cool in the sense that it goes under the mattress. And I don't really know, I don't understand how it works, but it does. I mean, I'm not, I'm not the nerd of the, of the company. I'm the one that explains how it all uh, explains what's going on, but it is able to determine um, not only when somebody's getting up, or in getting out of bed because obviously it's pressure sensitive, but it's able to tell the quality of the sleep that somebody's getting. Um, and it can alert family members of nighttime um, activity of getting in and out of bed. We can attach smart lights to this whole system so that if somebody does get out of bed between certain hours, like whether it's 9 p.m. to 7 a.m. or whatever the time frame is, it will illuminate a pathway to the bathroom so that um, it reduces the chances of seniors going to be injuring themselves. Again, this is all about being proactive and preventing injuries and also being um, able to help seniors without them interacting whatsoever with the, the devices. And so again, it can um, all be put into easy graphs about what the heartbeat, heart rate is, um, which can be really important. And we've even seen situations with customers where they've had many heart attacks in the middle of the night. And we were able to uh, see the, that happen and families were able to get involved and, and uh, the lady ended up actually having bypass surgery. Um, and so, and then of course, you'll have these graphs on where somebody's sleeping and where somebody's not. But again, my, my point is to tell you how great Well Aware Care is. I think it's, it is great, but the point is, it's just, I'm fascinated by how, I run a company, a relatively successful company that does home care, that provides one-on-one -on -one care, that uses very little technology whatsoever, and how this is going to change dramatically over the next few years on how home, uh, how care, uh, care is going to be provided through technology, because it's going to be forced to, because there's right now just not enough caregivers to go around. There's just not enough staffing. I personally have had family members that are in rehab right now, and they can't get any services. I mean, and it's not the nurse's fault. It's that they're trying to put 40 pounds of sand into a 20 pound bag. And you can't be successful doing that when you are short staffed and overworked. So there's going to be, um, there's going to be lapses in the amount of care people are going to be able to provide, which is only going to open the door and make it more um, likely that technology is going to come in and provide uh, those types of services. And so all of this stuff, every single uh, technology company out there as well is trying to get involved with Alexa and Google Assistant at home. Having those speakers in the home that can be voice activated and basically plugged in is certainly one of the things that Well Aware Care is actively working on right now so that if a fall does occur, you can just go on your phone as the adult child, press a button, and then you can speak through the Alexa to your parent and say, hey, listen, I know I saw that there was a fall. I'm, I'm making sure things are okay. If you don't pick up the phone, I'm going to call 911. And then all of a sudden, you have the ability to have that interaction using um, an Alexa or using a Google um, assistant and speakers. So it's, it's, it's fascinating how 
quickly this is moving. And to give you an idea of how quick it's moving um, in terms of the well aware care side, originally the fall, de fall detection devices, the circular devices you put on the, 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 the wall, uh, we were originally needing to take scans of the room, a 3D scan of the room um, through an app called Matterport. And, and you may not have heard about Matterport, but you know about it. If you've ever daydreamed of buying a big house on Zillow, which we, I assume we all have, sometimes they come with a 3D, uh, 3D model dollhouse that you can kind of zoom in and zoom out and see the whole house. That's a Matterport scan. And so what Matterport would do is stitch all those pictures together and make a 3D uh, rendering of of whatever room you're in. Well, now these fall detection devices, we're currently um, looking at implementing and they've, they've increased the AI so much in just the last six months that we don't even need to take scans anymore. We're just gonna be able to put these on the wall, slap them on the wall, and over the course of two weeks, it's going to learn where what's in the room, where the bed is, where the couch is, where the floor is where somebody can, can fall. And so, Within a year of, of being involved in well aware care, we've gone from needing to scan a room to this thing is on the verge of being able to scan the room on its own. So it's moving very quickly and and it's not just well aware care, it's everybody's just you know, holding on to dear life in some respects and seeing where this is going to lead because it's just going to uh, be easier and easier to introduce uh, a technology into the seniors home when it's, it's easier to, to get it up and running. So um, with that being said, that's kind of what I'm seeing. I'm happy to answer questions. If you wanted to email me, that is my um, that is my email address and I'll just kind of leave it up for there. And, and, and if you have any questions, feel free to, to ask away. Do you need to put one of those monitors uh, devices in each room, I presume? Is that what you're saying? Yeah, so the monitoring okay. devices themselves do a 13 by 13 area. Okay. So six and a half feet on each side of it and 13 feet out. So if whatever the size of the, the, the room is or the location is, um, divide that by, I believe, 169, and you'll get an approximate amount of fall detection devices that you need. Thank you. Did, did we get to see the device itself or maybe I missed it? Yeah, I can, I can go backwards and show it to you. So that circular item that says buy our home, that's oh, the device. Okay. It's about the size of a hockey puck or a drink coaster. So maybe it's like two and a half, three inches in diameter. And, uh, and it's pretty inconspicuous, especially if you have a light, um, a light, you know, colored room, you know, white or, or light gray or something like that. So if a person is interested, uh, how does it work? You, you send like the kit and they have to install it or is it friendly to install? Yeah, so I mean, the whole idea is that that we want to get to be able to drop ship this anywhere. The with the on the well aware care side of things, we want to be in every assisted living in the country. Um, we think that we'll be able to save them um, a lot of money in terms of labor, as well as it will extend the um, length of stay by their their residents because they're going to know about falls and risky um, uh, risky um, residents. Um, well before they have that major fall. Um, but to answer your question, yeah, right now, um, the idea is it's all pre-programmed in Littleton where the headquarters are. We ship it out to um, whatever location that's gonna be used. And then it is uh, installed using some basic instructions, um, but everything is programmed. So it is, once you install, uh, when I say install this, once you plug it in and stick it on the wall, it's already working because it's going to be pre-programmed um, with the Wi-Fi information and um, it, it's specific to each room. So it would say, hey, this needs to go in the bathroom right here. And it would be some basic directions on where to stick it on, in the bathroom. Got it. Thanks. Okay. You're very welcome. Can you go to slide 12 one more time, please? Thank you. All right. Well, then, um, like I said, I, Ron, did you want to say anything? Well, well, just to thank you, Ryan, very informative, uh, really appreciate it. And I, and I think this is an area 
where we do overlook technology. I think it's is catching up quickly because of some of the things you've mentioned, you know, specifically labor shortage one. But I think that one of the issues is, um, you know, sort of um, minimizing the nature of, of, you know, seniors using this. In other words, you know, I'm a senior, but I'm, I'm, you know, we're different. Seniors are different. I think we're on a cusp of a lot of technology being used by seniors. And, and I think the issue really is, um, you know, changing the, the stereotype and the fact that um, it's not really so much, you know, being older that's the problem. It's that you're just not, you haven't used it. So the key is sort of doing what you're doing right now, which is education. And I think education at any age is really critical. You know, you know people talk about, well, I can't figure this out. I'll ask my son to do it, how to figure it out. But, you know, a lot of the stuff, my children can't figure it out because they haven't been trained in it. They can figure out social media because they use it all the time. But technology, especially since a lot of this technology um, you know, has been designed by engineers who know how to use it, but they're not trained in marketing. You know, so they know how to use it. And a lot of the stuff is not intuitive. You need to know how to use it. So you need, you know, this, edu you know, education to me is the key. And secondarily, I guess, is, um, you know, I've been involved with AARP in terms of their age-friendly initiatives. And I think, obviously, you've identified a critical first need for um, I think, you know, adult caregiver children, you know, taking care of their parents. Um, but increasingly, I think that, you know, just like a lot of uh, things with universal design, the discovery is, well, wait a minute, this is, yeah, this is great for, you know, helping me take care of my parents, but also for my kids, you know, so I think that it's going to become clear how useful this is um, for families in general. And as long as, you know, we understand that the educational needs and also what you've discovered to which, which are privacy issues, people get really, you know, concerned about, you know, privacy, you know, hence, you know, we don't want cameras on the walls, things like that. But I think once people understand the usefulness of it and the, in terms of managing their daily lives, you know, I think, I think it's going to take off. And I, and I think the stuff that Mellowware is doing is great. So I really thank you for the presentation and we'll, we'll only do more to tell other people about it because this is a, you know, because pe people, so on, the, on the, the, the business side, people are struggling to find, you know, uh, staff, but on the caregiver side, people are struggling to find time, right? And that's what they, they're like, time stuff. How, how do I do this? How do I, 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 I can't do this, you know? And so this is something that really has terrific pragmatic value to daily living, you know. Um, Certainly, and and you're absolutely you're right. I mean, you all of this all of this stuff. Like for example, I have a my direct neighbor. I live in a condo building. He he had a practice and and a, a doctor's office practice. And now, like I'll I'll if I'm home for whatever reason, I'll hear him through through his door having meetings with his patients and i'll talk to him in the hallway he's like yeah it's just it's just easier and of course my bosses love it because i can see that many more people um and so the point i'm bringing up is is that uh, you know a, a, a I guess a side effect of the pandemic has forced a lot of families to start looking and saying hey we have to um get comfortable with learning uh, technology and get a little bit of out of our comfort zone and learn how to use zoom or whatever, whatever at the time it needed to be. And, um, you know, the, obviously the easier it is on everybody, whether it's the care, the, the adult children, caregivers, or the senior, the easier it is to implement these solutions, the more they're going to be adopted by the masses, right? And so um, that's obviously the, one of the things that you're making a point of is that sometimes the software um, engineers think something's easy and then it, in theory maybe it is on on for for a few people but once you start scaling that out you have to correct some of those areas where there are road bumps or there are hurdles to get over and make it as easy as humanly possible for people to use this stuff yeah and i think they will use it i mean that, that's the thing i mean once you make a commitment to, to working with them and training so some of that is sort of one-on-one -on -one training but i think the value of it once it, it's out there is going to be immense. And I think that, um, you know, I, you know, again, sort of getting over the stereotype of, you know, old dogs can't learn new tricks. Well, yes, they can. <laughs> yes, they can. Um, 
uh, and I think they will, you know, if, if, if you show them the value of it. So, um, and certainly PERS, for example, PERS are still, still valuable, right? right? You know, where, where well aware care might be more valuable is with somebody who has dementia or somebody who's refused to wear the PER before in the past and, and they're unwilling to, but if somebody's still active and somebody doesn't have memory issues, then the PER is still a valuable tool in the technology toolbox to be able to uh, have a safety net for your, for your, your loved ones. So um, it's, it's, and, and certainly we were, when I was at that conference, there are certainly PERS out there that are trying to become the smart watches of, for, for, for seniors, right? So that everything's kind of intuitively on their wrist. So it's definitely a race to see who wins where, um, but it is definitely coming down the pipeline and it's going to be really fascinating to see how everything kind of unfolds. So with that being said, thank you. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. I was able to, with, with uh, some questions, which I appreciate, we were able to get this to be about 45 minutes. I do apologize. We were planning to have two different kind of people uh, talking about um, the technology side, but we weren't able to do that. So hopefully this was, uh, was good enough, I guess I'll put it that way, but I appreciate you all, all coming and, and uh, learning a little bit more about some of the technology that's out there. Thank you so much. Thanks, Ryan. Thank you. Really appreciate it. Yeah. Thank you. Bye, everybody. I'll talk later, Ryan. Absolutely. Have a good one. I'll leave. Yeah.